Kathleen Cleaver's Black Panther Life Kathleen Neil Cleaver moved to San Francisco in November 1967 to join the Black Panther Party and just a month and a half later, right after Christmas, she married Eldridge Cleaver, who was also part of the Black Panther Party. She joined about three to four weeks after Huey P. Newton was charged with killing an Oakland policeman in a shootout. It was in San Francisco that Kathleen became the communications secretary for the Black Panther Party. I work directly with the Minister of Information of the Black Panther Party. We're building what we call the Ministry of Information, which would deal with the whole aspect of getting out information, publications, newspaper, magazines, pamphlets, contact with the press, arranging distribution of literature, uh, arranging printing, building tape libraries, building libraries, making sure there's printed publications, this type of thing. Uh, my husband is Minister of Information. She created the position herself, motivated by Julian Bond from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Kathleen applied everything that she learned from the SNCC to the Black Panther Party and was the first female member of the party's decision-making body. Although over two-thirds of Black Panther Party members were women, Kathleen Cleaver was one of only a few to hold senior positions within the party at that time. Kathleen Cleaver was one of the women who were very prominent in the National Black Panther Party, along with Elaine Brown and Erica Huggins. Violence was an issue that Kathleen and everyone, not just the Panthers, had to live with, mainly police violence. The first major attack against the Black Panther Party was in the 1960s by the Los Angeles first ever SWAT team and by 1971, 30 of the members of the Black Panther Party had been killed. This wasn't easy personally for Kathleen, and as time went on, there was a group of women from the Black Panther Party, including Kathleen, who would meet up and discuss what had happened to them, restore their health, and to recover from the injuries and traumatic experiences they faced. Cleaver's apartment was raided in 1968 before a Black Panther Party rally by the San Francisco Tactical Squad on the suspicion of hiding guns and ammunition, and nothing was found. Later that year, Eldred Cleaver staged an ambush of Oakland police officers, during which two police officers were injured. Eldred was wounded and fellow Black Panther member Bobby Hutton was killed in the shootout. In the PBS documentary, A Huey Newton Story, Huey said that Bobby Hutton was shot more than 12 times after he had already surrendered and stripped down to his underwear to prove he was not armed. And Huey was not happy about the shootout that Eldred Cleaver had purposefully set up. This had been a point of conflict between Huey and Eldred within the party, that Eldred was for using force and attacking his enemy whereas Huey was not for that over-aggressive action. Former Black Panther Eldridge Cleaver admitted to ambushing police officers in 1968, which resulted in the first of eight shootouts with law enforcement nationally in just two years. I am not standing for violence, uh, but I do stand for self-defense. Eldridge was charged with attempted murder and jumped bail and went to Cuba and then moved on to Algeria. In 1969, Kathleen and Eldridge got back together in Algeria. Kathleen gave birth to their son after arriving in Algeria in 1970, and she gave birth to their daughter in 1971. The ongoing discord between Huey and Eldridge led to the separation of the international branch of the Black Panther Party, as the Cleavers formed a new organization called the Revolutionary People's Communication Network. Kathleen Cleaver returned to promoting and speaking about the new organisation. To accomplish this, she and the children moved back to New York. The Algerian government became disgruntled with Eldridge and the new organisation, and he was forced to leave the country secretly and meet up with Kathleen in Paris in 1973. 
Kathleen then left for the United States later that year to arrange Eldridge's return and raise a defence fund. In 1974, the French government granted legal residency to the Cleavers and the family was finally reunited. However, after only a year, the Cleavers moved back to the United States, where Eldridge was arrested and tried for the shootout in 1968. Kathleen went to work on the Eldridge Cleaver Defence Fund and he was freed on bail in 1976. He was found guilty of assault and he was sentenced to five years probation and 2,000 hours of community service. Eldridge's legal situation was not finally resolved until 1980. During Kathleen Cleaver's time with the Black Panther Party, she helped feed people, provide medical care to families, and took families to visit loved ones in prison. She also helped put together healing retreats for women who had been in the Black Panther Party. Women who had been living underground, who had been tortured, who had been exiled. Overall, she contributed very much to the structure of the organisation. That was a brief look at Kathleen Cleaver's times with the Black Panthers. Kathleen's life story is far more extensive and there's lots more to tell. Kathleen and Eldridge separated in 1981 and she went back to university, Yale University, and graduated in 1984 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in History. Kathleen is currently still teaching and is also now a qualified lawyer. She is still very active and prominent in the community. Look her up online or in the library. Her story is more than history. It's the past, the present and the future. Thanks for watching.